Hey everyone, this is Zach, and if you're watching this, I am on my way to Knoxville Regional. So one thing that I've always wanted to do, but I've never gotten a chance because I've went to one live event, is to do a video of what's in my bag. This will be the bag that I'll be carrying around during the tournament, and I'm going to talk about what kind of things I'm bringing and why. And if you're interested in this stuff, I will have an affiliate Amazon link in the description. So if you do decide to pick those up, it will help me out a ton. So if you guys enjoy this content, do not forget to like and subscribe and let me know as you're watching this video, is there anything that's overkill? Is there anything that I don't need? Anything that's too much? Uh, I, there definitely will be one or two things that, that are probably overkill. And I probably won't bring all of the items every day but this is what will be in my bag as I travel. So let's get into it. First off, the bag itself. This is, I believe, made by PDP. It was something that was released in the very early life of the Switch. They made a V2, but as far as I know, both of those bags are discontinued. Now I did look and there is a similar bag from a different company that is a lot like this. So I'll have that linked in the description as well. But basically the V2 bag, the version two of this has a laptop pocket and I don't think that will be necessary and it's now like inflated up to 80 bucks because they no longer PDP no longer makes uh, the V ones are the V twos. So if you want the V two, you have to pay way more than I did for the V one. And I think the secondary bag that I'm going to link will be a better choice. But the one thing I do like about the bag is that if I'm able to bring it down, there are labeled pockets for almost everything for your switch for uh, up to three joy cons a pro controller your switch your dock and your cables so with this bag itself you can bring your whole switch and be ready but we're going to talk about what's in this side in a little bit let's go through the front first first off hand sanitizer it's uh kind of necessary i'm not too worried about getting sick i work with children and they are giant booger factories so um not really that big of a deal i think my immune system is pretty good but uh for my safety and the safety of others hand sanitizer always good next up in the top pocket we have a couple of lens wipes i am one of those people that are constantly pushing up my glasses if you haven't noticed uh if you've seen that in my videos and i'm always getting them dirty so i hate that and these lens wipes help. Not to mention, if you are using your phone, it's a good wipe to clear off your screen for your phone, clear off your screen for your switch, and just a little bit of alcohol to wipe down your equipment that you are constantly touching. Same thing with hand sanitizer. You wanna keep it clean. Next up, we go to the front pocket here. And in the front pocket, I have a couple of masks these are required to compete in Pokemon events. You need a certain kind of max. This is a KN95. I just picked up the cheapest 50 pack from Amazon and threw a couple in the bag. In there as well is uh, a DS charger. I'm not bringing a DS with me, but it's just a charger that always stays in that bag. Next up is a plush. I am bringing the plush of my favorite Pokemon, Tyranitar. This is one of the sitting cuties from the Pokemon Center. If you can see, I have another one up there. This is actually the one that I bring and I keep in my classroom. So I decided that I wanna bring this one instead uh, because I think it would be cool to come back and tell my students that this little guy went to Knoxville with me, went to a Pokemon tournament because they, they thought it was pretty cool when I told them where I was going tomorrow. Next up is the first controller. And as I lose weight, it's starting to become lopsided. Next up is the first controller. No, notice how I said first controller. 
and this is going to be the Nintendo Switch Fusion Pro. So this is the controller that I use on uh, stream and recordings. What I really like about it is its weight, its uh, premier features. It is really expensive. I did get it for cheap. I stacked coupons and a sale, um, but it comes with two face plates and this neat little carrying case, which I'm gonna put the charging cable for it here. For those of you who don't know, if you want to use a controller during a Pokemon tournament, it has to one, be a licensed Nintendo controller. So this is a licensed Nintendo controller. And two, it has to be able to work in a wired mode. You can't use wireless controllers during a tournament because there's a lot of people playing and a lot of wireless controllers would cause some interference. So uh, the wire charger has been kind of iffy. So that's the reason why I'm bringing more than one controller but this is my main controller. I usually don't put on these little clicky buttons on the back, um, but yeah, it's hard to fit in the case without it on the back. So I'll change that out once I take the controller out, but that's the first controller. Next up is a notebook. This is the notebook that I started with. My first event back in February of 2020, this little MSS PC uh, combination at a Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, this is this is the notebook I used. Uh, I haven't done a lot of live events. I used it for the Champions Cup hosted by A Drive. I used it for Players Cup 3, which I qualified for. So it's pretty empty. So hopefully I get some use out of it this weekend. But yeah, and in there somewhere is some pens to go with it. Next up is a little stand. This is made by Hori. They have these in a bunch of different designs, a bunch of different colors, but it's just a quick uh, stand. I actually think I might take this out because I have a Switch uh, LED o OLED now, which has a really good kickstand, so I really don't have to worry about the kickstand being crappy. And then I also have something else that kind of does the same thing in the bag as well. And I rather have that one over this one, but. This one is, uh, as I empty it out, this is a maybe item. I'm gonna set that to the side. There's our pens. Uh, Inkjoy, Papermate Inkjoy gel pens. I like these because I'm left-handed and uh, these dry very quickly as you write so there's less smearing for a pen. So uh, these are the ones that I usually go for. These are brand new, I pulled them out of my teacher cabinet. They still have the little gel caps on them or wax caps, but pens. And now we're getting into the back. So the most important thing here is the switch. This is a case, I believe also from Hori. I realized that I recently have been buying a lot of things from Hori. Uh, Hori, if you want to send me anything, let, let me know. But this is the Pikachu, Mimikyu, and Gengar case that they came out with. It's about 30 bucks, and the reason why I got this is because it's designed to fit an OLED switch with the Gengar Spit Split Pad Pro Compact controllers. These are my go-to handheld controllers, so when I am just playing casually, when I'm holding the, the switch, uh, this is usually how I'm using it. I rarely ever use Joy-Cons anymore because uh, Joy-Con drift scares me. But in here I have an extra USB Type-C cable for charging or to connect my controller in case something goes wrong with the first cable. A lot of my overpacking is due to paranoia. Just, just if you haven't figured that out yet. Next up is the third controller because I have the split pad compact on the switch uh, next up is the third controller and this is in a little Tom talk case so I like this case because it keeps the buttons from getting pressed so it's not draining the battery inside the backpack I don't know if you've ever thrown a switch controller in a backpack but every time a button gets bumped it'll try to look for a switch and it will drain the battery slightly a little but this is just a regular Nintendo Switch Pro controller. I did do a shell exchange from 
I believe extreme rate are somewhere similar to extreme rate. I'll have a link to it in the description. I thought about changing it, but the, the clear transparent blue is just such a nice combination. I, I kept the stock buttons. I kept the stock D-pad, the stock grips. You can change all those things with aftermarket shells, but I just, I just like the color. Give it a little bit of difference. Let it, let it be a little more noticeable so I can spot my controller easily and a pile of mini Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. Um, next up, and like I said, here, you can see we got pockets for just about everything that you would need to operate your Switch, including a pocket for the dock. And in that pocket, this is the Hori, uh, it's like a multi-tap stand. What I really like about this is that I bought this when I still was using my regular Switch with the crap Joy-Con, uh, the crap kickstand. And what I like about this is you press this button and it opens up, creates a nice little slide and it's got a charging port and on the side it's got the cable for an official charging cable and four USB uh, ports. So if you want to play a lot of party games, if you want to plug in more than one accessory, this is your go-to. Now unfortunately, this is actually the one that they use in tournaments. So if you've been to an in-person tournament before, you've probably seen this and recognize this. They don't sell these anymore in the US. They have a smaller version that has two USB ports, still probably just as good, but it is hard to find this one now. I don't know how the Pokemon company has so many of them, but there is a newer version uh, when I was, planning this video there is a newer version but it is in Japan only so if you know how to order things in the US off of Amazon Japan you can pick up the new version of this but in the description down below I'll have the one with two ports the smaller version lots up we got uh, joy-con straps I always just keep two in the bag just in case. And then the last pair of controllers are the original white Joy-Cons that come with the OLED Switch. Uh, these are just my newest Joy-Con, so if I'm going to trust any Joy-Con to use, it's going to be these ones. I basically used it for a little bit uh, until I got the split pads and I've been using those since. So these don't get used to often. So if worst case scenario, if I have to go back to joy cons, these will be the ones I'm using. And last but not least, a charging cable. I only use official Nintendo charging cables. I don't buy any of the third party stuff. Uh, ever since they had those third party docks and some of the switches got bricked from the docks and from the chargers. I just don't trust it. Nintendo designed the switch to have a weird charging method and a weird voltage. So I only buy the first party chargers and those are the only ones I use. So I always keep one in my bag. This was in my bag before I packed anything because I always want one with me. But yeah. That's going to be it when you know you put it all in the bag. It seems like a lot, probably because I have cases on cases to protect my stuff. And it seems really big. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you like any of this stuff? Did you like the video? Uh, do you think I'm overdoing it on the joy on the controllers? I, I, I know I'm overdoing it on the controllers. Just let me be paranoid. I'll probably end up just bringing one with me and leaving the other one in the hotel room but either way if you made it this far in the video i want to say thanks for watching uh like i said by the time this video drops i'll be driving to knoxville so wish me luck and if you're interested in any of this stuff there will be amazon affiliate links in the description down below so go ahead and check that stuff out i hope I hope this helped you in some way. And I hope that if you are more experienced at live events than I am, I hope that you could 
leave some feedback, some comments, and help me out a little bit. But that's going to be all. Until next time, I'm Zach, and we'll see everyone later.